This is Ask Athena, and these are intuitive reading sessions. And today, um, I laid some cards out, and uh, I wanted to share them with you. The first card I have is Sorrow. And everybody pretty much knows that if you've incarnated as a human, you're gonna have to pass through this stargate of sorrow. And I call it a stargate because basically sorrow transforms you. You go in one end of sorrow and you're at one vibration. And by the time you get launched out of the other side, you're alchemically different. And that's the, um, that's the medicine of sorrow. So um, this is the Osho Zen deck, and this card actually has a very beautiful story that goes along with it, which is um, Ananda, who is um, a disciple of the Buddha. He'd been with the Buddha for 42 years, right by his side, day in and day out, listening to the wisdom of this soul. Um, and if you don't know anything about Buddha, you can look it up on YouTube, but basically, uh, he was a prince from India named Siddhartha, and he had everything handed to him, and he still felt like something was missing. So he left his wealth and his kingdom, and he went out to solve a problem about suffering. And at the end of his, his life, he really found out that suffering is really inside of the mind, and to live a balanced life in the middle, the middle way, he could bring peace and bliss and consciousness to every single moment. So Ananda, his cousin, sat next to him. This is a picture of him right here. And this picture uh, is about how he felt after the Buddha had died. And he was crying and crying and very sad. And the disciples were chastising him, saying, he's enlightened and he just transitioned. Why aren't you celebrating? And Ananda said, I'm not crying for him. I'm crying for myself because after 42 years, I still have not fully awakened. And so I'm really sad. So that night, all night long, he cried and he cried and he cried and he went deep, 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 deep into his suffering. And by the morning, he said he was enlightened. And so the gift of suffering is the gift of awareness and awakeness because inside of that suffering there's an alchemical transmutation where the suffering takes the wound and it opens it up and it lets the light into the wound and then up comes the wisdom of the moment. So um, I'm no stranger to death myself. I had a, an issue with my brother when I was 20 who um, died and it was very traumatic for me. And I remember going deep, 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 deep out, down into the depth of my soul. And I had to dig the soul archeology span to bring forth that wisdom. And I had a closer relationship with the divine because of that wound. And I used that strength in all these other areas of my life coming around and all the different contractions and initiations that I face because who are you in times of sorrow and in times of pain? And you're only going to know that when you go through the transition of that deep, deep, deep sorrow. The middle card today is the miser. And the miser card really is about holding on to things and being afraid of letting go of a relationship or wealth or money or property or whatever, whatever ties that bind you up that you think that define you. So this is a woman who's just got all of her things around her and she is in this miserly state thinking that all these things are her and they define her. And I too, when I, uh, achieved all this success and wealth and prosperity and a million dollar house. I felt like I was my house. I was my house. I put every penny into my home and I identified myself as my temple. And when I surrendered my will to God um, in 2006, I just kept praying, you know, all this stuff isn't fulfilling me. Where am I in my relationship with the divine? And I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And once I found the wealth and the riches inside myself, then nothing outside myself could shake my foundation. 
Not losing a car, not losing a house, not losing a person, not losing a relationship, nothing. So my highest spiritual experience with going deep into my soul lets me know that my riches are inside, in my treasure chest, in my holy moment, in my conscious awareness of what the present is serving me as a blessing. Whether, I'll just use this as an example, whether my bowl is empty or whether my bowl is filled with light, emptiness or light, I can always find my way back to myself my true self, the little inner child. In the last clip, we worked with uh, Daniel, the healer, and he taught me a meditation that I'll share with you, which is going back on your timeline from being in the womb all the way up to the current age and reinstalling what was missing. Having your higher self or your conscious awareness self, the self that's right now going back, talking to my in vitro baby and to my one-year-old and to my three-year-old and to my five-year-old and to my 14-year-old and to my 18-year-old and to my 20-year-old who lost her brother and to my 24-year-old who started her first company and was afraid and to my 28-year-old who bought her first house and to my 39-year-old who lost her first house. All the different times bringing light and wisdom to those situations knowing that both are a blessing, an empty bowl full of darkness or a bowl filled with divine light. And the last card, this is one of my favorite cards, this is the patient card. Patience is with um, the understanding that there's always divine timing. Not my timing, but divine timing. Not my will, but thy will. I would like whatever the divine will would like for me so that what's important to me is that I as present as possible as I can be, realize my awakeness, my wakefulness. And when these moons are changing, this is like time. This picture is of a beautiful goddess sitting fully content, pregnant with the present moment, not forcing the baby to come out early, but knowing that there's a divine timing that whenever the project's supposed to be born or the relationship's supposed to come in or the divine light's supposed to shine through your soul and your sun and your solar plexus, that every moment is served to us perfectly, perfectly. And so everything in life now I find is magic. The revelation of being in the magical moment. So the two things or two missions on this planet, I'll just repeat from Daniel the Divine, I wanna quote him, DanielTheDivine.com, amazing, amazing, amazing. Number one, our mission is to have fun. Why, why is that a mission? Because you resonate, you're a resonator, like this, see this um, salt rock? It gives off light, and it's kind of on a dimmer switch, and basically, if you can imagine I'm dimming it when I'm sad and I'm not happy and I'm not having fun, and then I'm increasing the photonic light, when I'm celebrating my life and I'm having fun. So the first mission is to have fun, to have fun so that you can expand your awareness, expand your vibration, and be able to have more of a powerful impact on your reality. And the second mission is to consciously create from that illuminosity, from that illuminous place. When your candle, your internal candle is lit and your external candle is lit and you bring that candle consciousness to your present moment, then you're consciously creating your reality. You're not experiencing reality being created by default. And what do I mean by that? You're creating a reality from your wounds from the past, from the things your parents never gave you, from the things that you keep recreating where your boyfriend or your girlfriend doesn't give you, or that materialism doesn't give you. And so to consciously create your reality is to live in the bliss of who you are. And that, that lends itself to blessedness, the moment of gratitude, being, gra being grateful for this moment, carrying that light within you, no matter if it's sunny out or if it's rainy out. Because if you think about it, the light is always shining. The sun is always on, it doesn't turn off. We luminous beings turn away from the sun like the earth to create our night and day of our lifetimes our contractions and our expansions into the forgetfulness into the remembrance into the I don't know suffering into the oh I know 
and everything is blissed and blessed. So my name is Athena Starseed. I'm here today at the Mystic Journey Art Gallery in Venice, California, and I do readings. And if you would like a reading, you can get a hold of me at the link below, which is lightbodyfitness.com, or come in in person and have a reading here if you're in the Southern California area at the Mystic Journey Art Gallery. This is Athena Starseed, and this is a series called Ask Athena, Live in Your Blissed, Blessed Life. Stay tuned.